So my past video was about R cos formulae and today we're going to have a look at an exam question about R sine formulae. So just to start with, I've written out the expression that you need to know for a double angle formula for sine. What we're going to do is we're going to replace A with X and B with alpha. We're going to write out R sine of X minus alpha. The R, how we deal with that is we just multiply R until each individual term that we get on the right hand side. The reason we do that is so that we can then compare it to this expression here. But that's our later date. So first of all, a sine a cos b would be sine x cos alpha. So let's write r sine x cos alpha because we are multiplying it by r. And then take away sine b cos alpha, which is sine alpha cos x. But again, multiplying by r, we get r sine alpha cos x. Underneath, I'm going to write out the expression of, well, what's expressed here, 2 sine x minus 3 cos x. Let's now compare coefficient. So if I just get the highlighter tool out, the coefficient of sine x on the bottom is 2, and that's equal to the coefficient of sine x here, r cos alpha. So we can say that r cos alpha is equal to 2. Doing the same for um, cos x, well, the coefficient of cos x is just 1 here. You don't say minus 1 because that's already taken into account of by the 1, sorry, by the minus sign here. So we say r sine alpha is um, essentially just equal to 1. So let's form that expression, r sine alpha equals 1. We need to get two things from here. We need to get the value of r alpha and the value of r. So let's do that step by step. Step number one, we're going to multiply, divide r sine alpha by r cos alpha. Because what that does, well, let's write out and hopefully you guys will see. So r and r cancel out and sine over cos is always just equal to tan. So that will be equal to one over two. To get the value of alpha, you do the inverse tan of both sides and you get that r alpha is the arc tan or the inverse tan of a half. When you put that into your calculator, remembering to put your calculator in radians mode. Um, let's, let me just do that right now, actually. So inverse tan over half is equal to 0 0.464. 0 0.464. We now need to find the value of r somehow. And how we, the easiest way to do that now that we've got alpha is we can just point into one of these two equations. So let's do that. In this case, we have r is equal to 1 over sine alpha. And that's sine of 0 0.464, everything that's already expressed there. Putting all of that into your calculator, we have 1 over sine alpha, um, sorry, sine of that answer. And that will be equal to 2.236. 2.236. So that means that we can write this expression here as 2.236 sine of x minus, and then the value of alpha that we got, 0.464. Perfect. Let's now move on to the next part of the question. But before we do, actually, I'm just going to erase some of this stuff here. Perfect. Okay, hence find the greatest value of this expression here. What it wants you to do is um, use the expression that you just formed. So I'm going to replace everything inside the bracket with that expression. So for part B, we'll have 2.236 sine of x minus 0.464, close bracket, all squared. Now, if we think about it, the maximum that this could be is when the value of sine is equal to 1, because that's the maximum 2.323. Actually, a better way to write this out is values of sine vary between uh, minus 1 and 1. When it's equal to 1, that's when this expression here would be the, as large as possible. And when it is equal to 1, we get 2.236 all squared. If you thought to yourself, what well, if it's equal to minus 1? Um, then you get minus 2.236 and that's applicable as well because squaring minus 2.236 and 2.236 will get you to the same solution. In this case, um, if I just square that, that would be equal to 5. Okay, so for, oh sorry, it says find the smallest positive value of x for which this maximum occurs. So it occurs, um, like I mentioned, when it's equal to 1. So if we make sine of x minus 0.464, all equal to 1. Um, we then do the inverse sign of both sides, so x minus 0 0.464 would be equal to the inverse sign of minus 1, which on a calculator gives minus a half pi. Um, okay, you do have to be careful here though. If we look at the sine graph, minus a half pi um, refers to this value here. Minus a half pi. Oh, 
I apologize, it's because I put in um, inverse sine of minus 1 and not inverse sine of positive 1. When you put inverse sine of positive 1, you'll get half pi. Sorry about that. And um, yeah, that would be the better one to use here because if you used minus a half pi and then added 0.464 into it, it would be a negative number. Whereas here it's asking for the smallest positive value of x. So if, when you use a half pi by, make, by doing the inverse sine of 1 from both sides, sorry, this shouldn't be a minus 1. Um, you'll get x equals a half pi plus 0.464. Again, you put all of that into your calculator, so I'm just going to very quickly do that. And plus 0.464 is equal to 2.035. And that's it. That's your value of x, how much the maximum occurs. Moving on to the last part of the question, solve where this expression is equal to 1. Once again, we're going to replace this expression on the left-hand side with what we formed using our formulae. So 2.26, sorry, 2.236 sine of x minus 0.464 all equals 1. To solve this for x, we're going to start by dividing both sides by 2.236. Um, after doing that, we can do the inverse sine of both sides and we get x minus 0.464 is equal to the inverse sine of everything that's on the right hand side. I'm just going to do an arrow, feeling a little lazy. So when you put that into your calculator, inverse sine of... 1 over 2.236, you will get a value of 0 0.464. Okay. Oh, um, sorry, I was just a little bit um, stranged out because that matches this number here. But that's com still completely correct, 0 0.464. And then the value of x would be adding 0 0.464 to both sides. So you get, it's just 0 0.464 times 2, which would be equal to 0 0.927. And that is to three decimal places. Oh, it is asking for all the solutions, actually. So you do have to be careful. So I said the inverse sine of um, all of this is 0 0.464. But there's also another solution because we know that sine values. Um, so 0 0.464. Actually, I'm going to draw it by a graph. You can use a cast diagram. I just prefer to use the graphs. It's a horrible graph. There you go. Okay, pi is roughly 3.14. Um, 0.464 would fall somewhere here, so this repeated value where it repeats again is pi take away 0.464 because of the reflective nature of the cos graph. So if we do pi take away 0.464, that will give you a value of 2.677. So the, those are the two different solutions that fall within our domain. If we add 2 pi for the next solution, it goes outside of our domain, so we don't include it. And to get the other value of x, I'm just going to erase this because this suggests that there's only one answer for x, but... We just found that there's two. To get the other value of x, again, you just add 0.464, but this time to the second solution. So add 0.464, and that will get you a value of pi radians. That's everything for this question. Hopefully it made sense. And if you do have any questions, just let me know in the comments. Otherwise, be sure to like the video if it helped and subscribe. I'd appreciate it a lot. For watching, I hope this video helped. If you have any tutoring inquiries, be sure to visit my website, www.excelleneducation.co.uk. It's on the first link in the description too.